You may remember earlier this year we told you about a new trend for developers to sell new homes as leasehold rather than freehold. They would then sell off the freehold, the ground the property is on, to investment companies, meaning extra charges for homeowners. One of those charges is ground rent, and some homeowners have found the charge doubling every few years. They say it's unfair and makes it tough to sell the properties on. Well, now one of the home builders in our film, Taylor Wimpy, has set aside a fund of £130 million pounds to help reduce the costs. It applies to customers who bought homes between 2007 and 2011. The developer refuses to say how many people are affected though. Other developers also sold homes leasehold and the move by Taylor Wimpy is seen as the first recognition by a house builder that the practice of doubling ground rent was wrong. Here's a reminder of our film with James Longman. Luke Mosson bought his flat three years ago for £150,000. He'd fallen in love with this Victorian building in Tunbridge Wells. Little did he know, he'd also fallen victim to a growing trend for clauses that hike up ground rent. That's the yearly fee a leaseholder pays to live on a freeholder's land. Luke thought he'd pay £250 a year, which is roughly what most people pay. But six months after he moved in, he got a bill for £8,000 instead. A small but important clause had been written into his contract by his freeholder, potentially designed to be overlooked by his solicitor. On the face of it, it just seems immoral and completely unethical. And you read the contract as much as you... I think could. I probably read the contract about 50 times, um, certainly after, after I realised, and it didn't matter how many times I read the, the one paragraph in which this clause is contained, I still can't read it. The tenant shall be required to pay such annual rent as shall be one pound less than two thirds of the rentable value of the premises. That was the line that's that was the key, missed. That's the key bit. No idea what that means at all. Luke's freeholder is Martin Payne. He's certainly not the only person to do this, but we've been told about at least 20 similar cases where he's involved, and he's even been criticised in Parliament. One crook, whether it's criminal or not, it's not for me to judge, is Martin Payne, with an E on the end of the Payne. Luke's solicitor had to pay Martin Payne £7,000 to remove that clause, but it didn't end there. Luke was left with what's known as a doubling clause, something that's become increasingly common in the industry. It states ground rent is £250 a year, backdated to 1990, which doesn't sound too bad, but it also says that that figure will double every 10 years. So by 2020, he'd be paying £2,000 a year, and it keeps doubling. By 2070, he'd be paying £64,000 a year, and by the end of the 190-year lease, there'd be over £65 million every year to pay in ground rent. In total, over the course of the lease, ground rent would have cost more than £1.3 billion on a flat costing just £150,000. What's your feeling towards Martin Payne now? Um, it's not great, to be honest. He's caused me quite a lot of stress. Um, you know, I don't deal with him directly because everything goes through my solicitor. Um, but I'm very aware that this clause was insert inserted into the contract when they extended the lease for no other reason than his financial gain. There'd be no, no reason he needs to do this. You look at the wording of the clause, it is clearly constructed to deceive. What we say to all the members of the Commencing Association is make sure that if you're advising a client on these clauses because they can be so tricky that you run the calculation and that you are entirely sure as to what that calculation is because when you sit down with that and spend some time actually looking at it it becomes very clear that this is just an attempt to dupe people into a very uncomfortable position. And what we've seen in a lot of these leases and contracts is this doubling clause, doubling of ground rent. Is that something that you see a lot of? Again, this is a new thing. And um, if you think what doubling the rent every 10 years actually means in investment terms, it means that the, um, the rent will be going up by 7% a year. A guaranteed 7% return is pretty good in this market. And so this is what has created these new investment vehicles that are so interesting to, um, say, pension funds and, and other 
um, uh, financial investors. People like Luke freely enter into these contracts and it's not unlawful. The allegation isn't that Martin Payne expects people to actually pay these ridiculous sums. It's that he's banking on solicitors to miss the clauses and pay him to remove them. We asked him for comment. We are surprised to be contacted in regards to Mr Mossum and his concerns as we have recently agreed a settlement with his lawyer. In terms of the contracts used, these were drafted following professional advice given at the time. We have also tried to arrange a meeting with Sir Peter Bottomley MP to discuss the matters he raised in Parliament but have yet to receive a response from him or his office. Well, we can talk now to Joanna Derbyshire, who is a leaseholder who bought her home from Taylor Wimpy and then discovered that her ground rent will double regularly. We're also joined by Sebastian O'Kelly from Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, who's been campaigning against leaseholder fees, and Sir Peter Bottomley, a Conservative MP and Chairman of the Cross Party MPs Group on Leaseholder Reform, bringing it up in the Commons next week. Thank you all for joining us. Um, Sebastian, Taylor Wimpy putting aside £130 million. How what is the money for, is it clear, and how significant is it? It's a very good question. On the face of it, it's a significant sign of contrition that something went very seriously wrong here. But what is the money for? Uh, in the case of leasehold house owners, we'd like to see them using the money to offer the freehold back to the original buyers at the price that was originally offered. But unfortunately, Taylor Wimpy sold these freeholds off to some of the most hard-nosed sharks in the property game. How they get them off them is an open question. In the case of flat owners, there'll have to be a deed of variation to reduce the ground rents. I would suggest they reduce it to zero. What is ground rent for? What is it for? It just goes Nothing. straight into the it pockets? Just, it just goes straight into the pocket of the freeholder. It's for no service whatsoever. Um, Joanne, you bought a, a Taylor Wimpy house uh, on a leasehold with a doubling ground rent arrangement. When did it become clear to you that, that the, ra the ground rent would double? It was clear to us from the start that the ground rent would double, um, but we always intended to buy the freehold. Um, at the point of sale, we were told it would be about five to six thousand pounds to buy it. Um, neither Taylor Wimpy nor the conveyancing solicitor that they recommended we use informed us that those leasehold, those freeholds, would be sold on um, to investment companies who would then want thousands and thousands of pounds to buy them. And so the situation that you find yourself in now is what? Um, it's, it's more unclear after yesterday, um, but it's fair to say that had we purchased the freehold from Taylor Wimpy when we bought the house in December 2010, we would have paid them just less than £6,000 for it. Our best option now is to use a process called enfranchisement to agree a fair price with the current freeholder. Um, that's likely to be anything in the region from eleven to £26,000 plus costs. Uh, you know someone who actually tried to sell their house and that sale fell through because of the situation with the ground rents. Tell us what happened there. It did. That was one of my neighbours, Claire, and the house sale fell through on the actual day and she'd already completed on her new property and the house sale fell through because um, the purchaser solicitors um, identified the doubling ground rent clause um, and advised them to pull out of the sale. Uh, Sir Peter Bottomley, it's an issue you're bringing up in the Commons, what can be done to control what is going on here? Well, first of all, I think we need to distinguish between the Martin Payne type character and the developers, including Taylor Wimpy. And I welcome, by the way, Taylor Wimpy doing something on this. Uh, the Martin Payne thing I'll return to some other time, probably in Parliament. The, the, the pension fund to invest in the freehold companies, the Adriatics of this world, need to say to them, don't act in a socially irresponsible way, a corporately irresponsible way, we don't want it. The people who are active in the freehold companies like Adriatic ought to start saying how on earth can we multiply the value of the freeholds we bought at say 5,000 up to 40,000 and then try to in effect screw the ordinary innocent leaseholders. Parliament needs to act, government needs to act, the government advisory services need to act, the lawyers need to confess to all the mistakes they've made and we need to abolish new leasehold and go on to common hold so none of this can happen either by accident or by design. It's been a, a, a total mess, a swamp. I think the, the, the metaphors almost fail me. You've got ordinary people having their life savings taken away by unfair and abusive terms. Is the only way to get everybody to act correctly to actually legislate here? 
Well, legislation will help to, to make common hold better than lease hold, but some of the other abuses, I think the Competition and Market Authority ought to look at some of these terms on a super complaint, perhaps from the Consumer Association, and rule that they're void because they're abusive. I think mean, anyone who thinks that you can get to a ground rent of, of t tens of thousands of pounds, let alone a million pounds, on a small flat needs to realise that what's being done is so wrong, well, whether criminal or not, it should be unenforceable, it's unfair. So what would you say then to, to somebody, don't pay the ground rent? No, you've got, you've got to pay the ground rent or else you get evicted. And, and there are other people around in, in the leasehold forest, uh, to mix the metaphor again, uh, who are evicting some of my constituents at the moment, or trying to, through other little stratagems. I, th I think but, but sorry, to wake sorry up to interrupt, for not paying ground rent, is that...? You, 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 uh, it's, it's too complicated to explain. Okay, it's, it's, fine. it's a park home issue. Uh, but like, I, I think that you don't want to get yourself evicted, but you do need to say to people, come and defend in public what you're doing. Taylor Wimpy got involved in public discussion and they've made their decision and I hope their non-executive directors are glad that they intervened and that their managing director did something about it. A Persimmon haven't yet, Bellway haven't, Galliford Tri haven't, a number of other companies need to do what they're doing. Follow Taylor Wimpy, but also we need to realise that Taylor Wimpy haven't actually completely solved the problem, as Sebastian O'Kelly has explained. And if I may say so, I think that Sebastian O'Kelly and Martin Boyd, together in the charity Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, have done more than 650 MPs and more than four or five governments. It's a non-party issue, but we all need to work together to solve it. Thank you very much. It's uh, no doubt a subject we will return to. Thank you very much, uh, Sebastian O'Kelly, Joanne Derbyshire, Sir Peter Bottomley. And uh, we did ask Taylor Wimpy to come on the programme. They declined. In a statement, the Chief Executive, Pete Redfern, said, we've listened to the concerns and difficulties that some of our customers have faced as a result of their doubling lease and taken action to put it right. We are sorry for the worry this has caused them. They go on to say, we have recently decided that all future sales of Taylor Wimpy houses on new developments commencing from January, 1st of January 2017 will be on a freehold basis except where we do not own the freehold.